Hello dear sisters, how are you doing today? Uh, and today I wanted to talk about our previous messages. Since I've been gone for so long, I was thinking it will be a great idea to summarize everything what we have learned in the past 10 weeks. Um, so that's what our message is going to be about. So I will start with week 12, because a couple of previous messages, they were summary of the messages before. So we'll start with week 12. So uh, I hope that you remember that in week 12, we talked about praying for our husbands from head to toe. And I showed you how to do it. And I presented some scriptures and some scriptural examples uh, of praying for our husbands from head to toe. We were praying for their minds, which is for their heads. We were praying for their mouth, which is their speech. We prayed for their eyes, which is their vision, hands, and heart. So we covered our husbands from head to toe with our prayers. So I hope, my dear sister, that you're persevering, that you're still praying this specific prayer over your husband, and I want to pump you up and encourage you. So don't stop, continue if you stop for a little bit. Then in week 13, we talked about, uh, encourage, I was encouraging the interceding wives, specifically bumping you up to continue to intercede for your husbands. And I also presented several scriptures before you where the Lord himself in his word encourages us to intercede encourages us to pray. And those scriptures were Matthew 7, 7, Luke 19, 4, and Ephesians 6, 18. And I also mentioned, based on those scriptures, that our prayers, in general even, should be proactive, they should be consistent, and they should be dedicated. We should be dedicated to this ministry of praying, ministry of communing with the Lord, ministry of interceding. We also were analyzing our prayer life and seeing, is it dull or is it sparkling with every spectrum uh, of the rainbow that uh, the prayer can sparkle with? So that's what we talked in week 13. In week 14, we talked about the ornament of meek and quiet spirit and cultivating that virtue by the Spirit of the Lord. And obviously our key scripture was 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, verses from 1 to 6. And I mentioned that that um, virtue is not corruptible. When a woman cultivates that virtue, it's not something that's going to fade away with years of aging. No, it will stay. It will actually sparkle more and more with years. And this virtue is of great price in the sight of the Lord. Also, we talked about uh, relating to our husbands in, husbands in the spirit of meekness and quietness and gentleness. Um, we also talked about, about uh, the signs of not possessing the meek and quiet spirit, which would be nagging, discontentment, irritation, sharp remarks. And we also talked about the signs of a woman who possesses gentle and quiet spirit, with, which would be being gentle and being quiet. Um, in week 15, we talked about, um, I actually challenge you and challenge myself to analyze once again, if we are meek and quiet. Uh, we also talked about the right response to our husband's corrections because sometimes we shut down, sometimes we just reject our husbands right away, what they're saying, if they are discontent with something and they see something in our character that they would like to be corrected. So we talked about the wise response, which would be the meek and quiet response. And also reminded you, reminded you that very often the Holy Spirit actually is using our husbands to draw something in our character and our behavior to our attention. In week 16, we talked about controlling our husbands again. And I challenged you to actually see and analyze your life, analyze your behavior to see if you are controlling your husband. And I reminded you that when we boss our husband around, 
that is controlling our husbands. When we reminding them to do something again and again, again and again, that is controlling. And I, I reminded you that we cannot, as wives, cannot play the Holy Spirit who wants to change our husbands. Holy Spirit is the one who is going to do that work. And when we do uh, control our husbands, we actually hinder the work of the Holy Spirit in our husband's life. And we also made a list of what we tend or gravitate towards controlling our husbands in, in what areas. And we worked on those areas by the power of the Holy Spirit. Then in week 17, I talked about us being and engaging in the spiritual warfare. I hope you remember that I mentioned that when we start actively pursuing the virtues that the Lord wants us to pursue, the whole hell breaks out. So I was actually giving you some scriptures and encouraging you to continue to push back the gates of hell and continue pursuing the, the, um, those virtues that we've been pursuing in our studies, like man, man, gentle and quiet spirit. And obviously I was giving you some scriptures on the spiritual warfare as Ephesians 6 verses from 12 to 13 or 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses from 3 to 6. In week 18, I was giving you, presenting before you five keys to victory in the spiritual warfare. And the first victory, uh, the first key, I hope you remember, by the way, maybe start thinking, do I actually remember what she talked about? <laughs> So the first key was actually to first of all recognize that you are in a spiritual warfare. How can we, you know, fight the good fight if we are not even aware that there is a fight going on around us? Then the second key was tearing down every stronghold, every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. The second one was standing on the truth of the Lord, standing on his word and his promises. Number four, being filled daily with the Holy Spirit. And number five, quality and meaningful and deep devotional times with the Lord. In week 19, we talked about encouraging our husbands. And I talked a lot about the constructive power of encouragement and how much it means to our husbands. And I also talked about letting our husbands know through our encouragement that we do not take them for granted. In week 20, we talked about destructive effects of the lack of praise or the lack of encouragement, which might create a want or a need or a void in our husbands and open the door for them and their inner man to be vulnerable towards the attacks of the enemy, demonic attacks, or the seductive woman that flatters with her tongue, that drips honey with her tongue. So that's, that's our 10 weeks. And so here's our other milestone. We are now on week 20, or 21 actually will be um, next week. So I'm very excited. So your homework will be for this week. As I you know, presented this little summary of the previous week, as you listened, I hope you try to analyze, do I even remember any of those things? So if there was something that you didn't remember or completely, it's completely gone out of your mind, Please go back to those uh, studies, those messages again, and listen to them again specifically. Because we don't want just to brush over it, you know, flippantly. No, every message is extremely, extremely important. So, and I had to do the same, by the way, being gone for a whole month, I sat down, I listened <laughs> to myself, kind of weird, but it's important, you know, look through my notes again, you know, and refreshed everything what we talked about before. So that would be your homework for this coming week. And I'll see you next week. God bless.